trying to insert my 18 pages energy report in AutoCAD, I realized the time I was wasting attaching these PDF pages and then moving it around scaling them and so on. Basically, I was inserting these pages and randomly placing them and, you know, adding all of this extra work. So it was a nightmare, but anyway, with some optimization techniques, I was able to simplify my life and save plenty of time. Do you wanna know how we did it? So when I try to do a PDF attach, right? Um, the issue that this uh, tool or command has, so um, I was selecting my PDF, of course, and then selecting uh, with the first one and holding the shift on my keyboard. I was selecting all of my pages and the issue was for the insertion point, right? If I checked the insertion point to be specified on the screen and I click OK. So here in the command line, it says the page one is there so I can click like so. But the problem was that page two, I didn't know where to click next. So basically I was, you know, working with my eyes closed because if I don't know where the next page, in this case, page three goes, so I will have to just randomly click like so, which was a waste of time. So again, page 15, 16, 17, and finally on the last page, I could finally see where I was inserting my PDFs. So that was a waste of time, right? Because at this point I needed to select them all, scale them, and then moving around, which again was a waste of time. So now when I tried the next option, which again was PDF attached, right? Same procedure, select my PDF, and then selected all of my pages, uh, holding the shift on my keyboard and selecting like so. And the next option was uncheck the insertion point on your screen. So look what happened when I did that. Basically AutoCAD inserted my 18 pages PDF on the same location, which again was a waste of time because I had to move it around one by one and then scale it and arrange them and so on. So you can see the problem right there. So let me erase all of this and let me now um, Oops, yep. So then what I uh, started doing was trying to figure out a way um, to make this process less painful for me, right? So the way I did it first, I tried to open the tool palette with the control three on my keyboard. And then my tool palette was on the side. So there was a handy dynamic block over here that was called Detail Layout Grid. So when I try this and inserted it, you can see it's very tiny, but it's right there. So what I was looking was a way to somehow create a grid, a grid that can be customized and that can help me to place my PDFs accordingly, right? So this was uh, something that I found already. So it has a grid on it and so on. So it was a good start. Um, so for this line on the middle, I didn't care because I could simply edit this block, right? Right click and block editor. So I could simply erase that line and then simply close and save my changes to this block and I will have a clean grid like this. So again, this was a pro, um, a nice pro, uh, 
progress that I was, but it wasn't what I was looking for because the problem with this was that there wasn't a way to change the size of my uh, PDFs uh, pages. In this case, this is a square, but what if I have an 11 by eight and a half uh, page size or a 11 by 17 um, inches page size again? So that was a problem. So I discarded this first option. So then I proceeded um, to um, start thinking about it, right? And the next thing that I tried was uh, to create a, a rectangle with the regular rectangle command. And then of course, specify on the screen, I'll pick the dimensions um, option over here and say, uh, let's say 11 inches, and then 17 inches, and then I will have my rectangle like so, right? So the next option, again, um, I was thinking about using ar arrays. So I use the array rectangle option or command, and I proceeded to select my 11 by 17 sheet, like so. So at this point, um, the good thing about array was that, of course, I could um, change the base point of my array, right? With this option over here, base point, and I could simply pick my base point over here. And then from this point, I could place my sheets like so to create my grid. So it was nice and clean. And the beauty about arrays was that now I had the power to customize the sizes of my PDF pages. For instance, right now is 11 by 17 inches, but I, I could have uh, eight and a half by 11, and I could have a sheet that was that size, right? But again, these had some limitations because you can see all of the things, uh, the lines intersect to each other, which again was not right for my purpose, which was simplify my life, inserting multiple PDF pages. So again, I discarded this. I uh, did so, put some effort on it, trying to make it work, but it didn't work. So, now the final um, option that actually did work. What I did was um, simply use lines, right? Using the regular line command. And I proceeded to specify the size of my page. In this case, um, 11 inches by 17 inches up. So now, Look what happened when I uh, created my my array option. So array rectangle again. So uh, I could again uh, specify my base point over here from the command line. So I click base point, and then I proceeded to click over here like so and then press escape. So at this point, of course, I needed to arrange this. So it's the size of my PDF precisely like so. So the beauty of this grid is that now I can simply add more um, pages to my grid like so quickly. And look what happened now if I, for instance, don't need 11 by 17, but I need a, um, eight and a half by 11 inches. You can see that I'm still maintaining that beautiful grid over there. And this is now serving my purpose. So again, I can customize this to whatever PDF size that I need and I could add whatever a number of pages I need with these grids over here. 
So let me now show you how I now uh, can insert PDF quickly with this uh, array option. So let me copy that with control C, right? And let's go back to over here, the um, paper space. So, so far you guys saw that uh, I went through the process of how I ended up with this final array option that is gonna help me place my whatever size of PDFs I have quickly here in AutoCAD. So let's continue with that. So again, I was here on paper space and I'm gonna go to the side and paste my array option with control V like so. So again, um, let me show you now the PDF that I was trying to insert, which was this, my energy report. And let me open that up. And this uh, report, was uh, or had 18 pages, as you can see over here. So 18 pages. Um, so let me go now and proceed it to, so first I thought, so how I want to lay out um, my PDF pages over here, right? Well, I want it to be uh, uh, six a rows, or, oh, sorry, yeah. So six over here and then three uh, rows down, right? So then of course I proceeded to change this and I could go here and say one, two, three, four, five, six. And, or I could go here and down and simply have three uh, rows or columns, sorry. Um, so yeah, so now that I had my grid ready, I was ready to insert. Also, the size was important, right, of my PDF. So right now I have it as eight and a half by 11, but to be more precise, what I did was go to my PDF uh, pages, and there was an option here under file and properties where I could see exactly the size of my PDF pages, which was 8.26 inches by 11 inches. So knowing that 8.26, I went over here and updated this 8.26 and press enter. And of course, uh, my uh, grid will update automatically and I was ready to attach. So PDF attach right there. And then now when I selected my um, PDF and click open. Of course, I hold in the control shift on my keyboard. I selected the last uh, PDF. And then the important part here was that for the scale, of course, that's one for the rotation was zero, but the insertion point. Um, so I now need to check. So it says specify on the screen. So once I clicked OK, I then was ready with the page number one. So at this point, I could simply select like so and start adding or implementing because I knew exactly where I was clicking, right? So, but before I was working with my eyes closed and now I have this handy um, grid that I can use to quickly placed my PDF sheets and it's even fun to work like this, right? So once you do that, you will have all of your PDFs ready there. And at this point, I can simply select my PDFs and simply move it to the side like so, place it on my corner, use the scale command with the P option for previous. And then I could simply select my point over here and then use the R option for reference. So, and then I could simply specify my reference over here to over here and then finally place my objects over here like so. 
And then of course, at this point, I don't need this. I could simply erase it or so on, but you saw how easy and fun it was to insert 18 pages PDF on my drawing. And again, this will work for any size of uh, PDF, 11 by 17, eight and a half, 11, and so on. So, but everything didn't end here because now I needed to find a way to reuse this grid on any of my um, drawings, right? Because um, I don't want to simply copy in this um, array option on any drawing. I needed a way to have it always available for me. So, and the way I did it was, uh, let's go over here on model space. So the way I did it was, so let me reduce that over here like so. So the way I did it was convert this array option into a block. So simply by using the B shortcut on my keyboard, like so B and say something like lazy grid or lazy PDF grid. So again, you can rename it as you wish, but in my case, I call it lazy PDF grid. So at this point, uh, specify baseball, that's good. Objects, so let's click OK. And then insertion point would be over here. Click. So now that I had this um, grid option as a block, you can see over here on them, I was able to copy this into my block library, right, first. So the way I did it was, let me go over here. Right, so it's right here, to, uh, block library. So I could simply open um, any of my drawings or I could simply open this just to give you an example. So then I can simply copy the block that I created with control C, go over here, paste it like so. So it's right there and I could simply close and say yes to save the changes. So at this point, I needed to add this uh, block library to AutoCAD. So the way I did it was going to blocks. Um, if you don't have this palette, it's called blocks palette. Like so, and you will have it right there. So again, libraries, uh, in order to add that, we could have this option over here. So if we click that and find our uh, blog library in this case. So let me go here and then over here. And finally, it was this one. So where we saved our uh, grid, we needed to open the same drawing. So once we do that, and we can see that it's loading and we will have all of our blocks available, including our uh, lazy grid, which have to be somewhere in here. It's right there, lazy grid. You can see it. So the next time that now I have a, let's say I'm working on another drawing, right? For instance, I'm gonna open a different drawing, in this case, a floor plan that I have. Um, so let's say I want to insert or insert my PDFs here. I could simply go to my bro, uh, block palette. And of course we will need to have the explode option checked. So by clicking on it and let's click on it and insert it, click like so, all right. And then we will have our grid like so. So what do you think about this way of inserting multiple PDF sizes in AutoCAD using this smart grid or array option. As always, today's live stream comes thanks to my supporters, people who believe on my work, um, either on Patreon or as a YouTube member. Thank you. And for those people, you have this another video where you can even save more time in AutoCAD. So I'll see you over there.